I think, I think what makes me the most angry is that the thing I've learned um, throughout the last four or so years being engaged in this community and getting to know people on a personal level is that not everybody values that. Um, and that's been sort of difficult to grasp because it's something that has brought so much passion to my life and I've become so interested in learning people's individual stories and especially people whose stories aren't heard generally um, and to know that that's not true of everyone else um, and especially those who have power in the community that that's not necessarily something that they value as much as I do has made me um, really frustrated and so some of the things that have happened even in the the first couple of months that I've been um, working in my new job in the community is I've noticed that these communities that are are marginalized or are on the periphery, um, who I'm working with every day, they're not included when people consider the Northfield community or the Faribault community. And so people will think that they're reaching the whole community or that everyone can access the information or the resources that they have or are providing, and that's just not true. Um, and it's, it's happened in really small, um, circumstances or in even in bigger ones um, but just the realization that not everybody thinks oh this would be something that this community would would want to know about or that would be really beneficial to this community um, and sort of not having that that mindset or that value um, of valuing the ideas and the perspectives and the thoughts of of every community member in our community um, and I know I'm talking in sort of broad terms, um, so maybe I'll give an example. Um, pretty recently after I started my job, um, there's this, this contentious issue in Northfield about this pedestrian path that would connect the two sides of Northfield. Um, because right now we have St. Olaf on the west side, Carlton on the east side, downtown is on the east side, but to get from the west side to the east side, you have to cross three railroad tracks, a state highway, and a river. Um, and so for some, if you drive a car, that's not a big issue. Um, but one of the neighborhoods that I work at, with in my position at Growing Up Healthy is on the northwestern side of Northfield. Um, and so they're not on the side where downtown is, where the library is, where the grocery store is, where the core of the Northfield community is. Um, and to access that, they have to cross the railroad tracks and the highway and the river, and especially the highway, which is dangerous. Cars are zipping down it all the time, and people, families are crossing this highway with their young kids um, when there's traffic. And that's not a situation that I think anybody in this community should have to, to undergo. Um, and so there was a plan to build a pedestrian path to connect the two sides. And when I first took this job was when I first learned about it and I brought it to the attention of the neighborhood leaders that I work with in this Northwestern community in Northfield and they hadn't heard of it. Um, and by this time it had, it had been going on for a while, it had been an issue within the city and despite all of that it had not been brought to their attention that this trail that could connect their neighborhood to downtown by a safe passage, um, no one had thought to tell them about it. And Yes, maybe there's a language barrier. A lot of the neighborhood residents speak Spanish, but I didn't think that that should be any reason why they shouldn't know about this and they shouldn't be as actively involved as other community members had been um, because this was something that would greatly impact their lives and their quality of life, um, that would give them a safe outdoor space to be in, that would enable them, their children to walk to the library in safety, which I don't think is too much to ask. Um, and so just the small, fact that they hadn't even been told about it or they hadn't the information hadn't been passed on to them um, which I don't think is too much to ask of anybody um, just that that made me so frustrated and so I worked with some of the neighborhood leaders and some of the council women on the city council to bring together a meeting to tell the neighborhood what the trail meant what it would do um, and just that simple act of bringing these two groups together made such a difference. Um, 
the neighborhood leaders got mobilized immediately, um, signed petitions in support of the trail, um, wrote little short stories about what it meant to them and to their family to be able to have a safe, safe access from one side of Northfield to the other. Um, and to see how much passion and how much interest was, was there from the community, that it was like a fire that you just had to light the match, but nobody had been doing it. Um, you just had to tell them that something was happening and that simple act hadn't been done. Um, and that sort of appalled me. And I think that I've seen that on a number of different levels um, since I've started working here. And it's not always about one specific issue, um, but it's just this disconnect in communication. And it's not because one community doesn't need access to the information um, or doesn't want access because as that example shows I think that with with a small bit of information they they absolutely um, benefited from it and so to not have included them and to not have connected them with the information or the resources that they deserve as members of this community I thought that that was just incredibly frustrating.